Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the ARX-160 Assault Rifle. This is a very unusual assault rifle, a lot of unusual things about it, and at first it was statistically unappealing for me. I did not like this gun, I had a very difficult time using it, but I took a closer look at its attributes and found some very, we'll say, unorthodox classes, and I managed to get very good gameplay and kill a lot of people with them. And we're going to be showing you those classes today, along with the stats that I initially did not like. The first thing we want to talk about is damage. This assault rifle will deal 43 damage in close quarters combat, but it'll drop all the way off to 17 damage at a distance. What this means is that it's 3 shots to kill up close, but 6 shots to kill at long ranges, making it the lowest damage assault rifle. And I class it as the lowest damage assault rifle because its minimum damage is the lowest. The FAD and the SC-2010 both deal a little bit lesser maximum damage, but they're 3 shot kills. The other weapons will drop off to a 4 shot kill at long ranges, or a 5 shot kill at long ranges. The ARX is really the only one that has a six shot kill at long ranges and in Call of Duty games six shots to kill at long ranges is typically indicative of a submachine gun. Headshots will deal 1.5x normal damage depending on your range. That may or may not grant you one less shot to kill, but they definitely do deal more damage. The three shot kill range is 25 meters. This is very low. The only weapon with a lower three shot kill range is the Honey Badger, and it's not much lower. And if you put a silencer on this one, it would be considerably lower. And the range at which it's, it reaches its minimum damage is also very low. So this is a very low range assault rifle. Do not think of it as a long range weapon. You're going to be hitting those six shots to kill very quickly. On the plus side of the ARX, it does have a very high rate of fire of 857 rounds per minute. That is the second highest, and it is only just barely behind that of the FAD, and barely behind the burst of the MSBS, that's in its own little category, but it shoots very, very fast for an assault rifle. It can be a bullet hose, it puts a lot of bullets down range, and that helps make up for the lack of damage. Because of the high rate of fire and low damage properties, it's going to have a very fast time to kill up close, one of the best in the game, but it's going to have a moderate to slow time to kill at longer ranges. Medium range, it's going to be a little bit on the slow side. At longer ranges, it's going to be very much so on the slow side if you can hit your targets. So it's very much so geared toward up close and personal combat. Its effectiveness at long ranges is more determined by the recoil than the damage, and unfortunately in the case of the ARX, it has by far the highest recoil of any of the assault rifles, and this is going to go contrary to logic because many of you will tell me that it feels very good, or that the recoil is lower, or reading about the weapon, many of you already know that the first two shots have 15% less kick, but there are other assault rifles that have better kick multipliers, or more kick multipliers, for instance the FAD has minus 10% for the first 10 shots, but if you go to Symphic.com, or I'm sure Xbox Ahoy will do a video in a little bit, or if you do some wall tests, you'll see that the ARX-160 has by far the highest recoil of any assault rifle. Trust me on this, it does kick a lot, and unfortunately even the foregrip won't reduce that recoil very much. It kicks so much more so than normal that even with the foregrip you're not bringing it back down to a normal sort of recoil for an assault rifle. It's closer to normal, but even with the foregrip it's going to kick a lot. What it does have in its favor is a very unusual built-in attachment. It has an integrated or built-in laser sight that you get with the weapon, kind of like an extra attachment, and it's kind of like having built-in steady aim. It reduces your hip fire radius by approximately 15%, but do remember in the case of hip fire, it's determined by the area of the cone that you're looking at the person, and that's going to be reducing it by a square factor, so your reduction is approximately 20 28%, so you can say that your hip fire is approximately 28% better with this weapon than with any other assault rifle, and of course if you stack that with steady aim, it gets even more accurate, so it is a very, very good weapon for hip fire, again gearing it more for close quarters combat than longer ranges. Aim down sights time is standard for the assault rifle class at 0.3 seconds or 300 milliseconds. It also reloads on the faster side of things at approximately 1.7 seconds when you do the reload cancel, which most of you will do, and closer to 3 seconds if you go through the full animation. Magazine size is standard for assault rifles with 30 rounds in your magazine. Extended mags will bring it up to 45, and I do often run extended mags on this weapon because of the low damage. I do unfortunately need a lot of my bullets to kill somebody. Time to judge the iron sights. I think that the iron sights are too bulky for long range combat. They are very good for medium range, they're good for close range, but at long ranges, which again with the recoil of the weapon and how it's going to kick up, it's going to kick up very fast and the bottom part of the iron sights will almost entirely obscure my targets, so I generally avoid iron sights for long range combat. 
So if you plan to use the weapon up close, or maybe a little bit in medium range, I'll just say stick with the iron sights, they're great, you don't need anything else. However, if you're going for medium long range engagements a lot with this weapon, which you probably shouldn't be doing anyway, but a lot of you will, you'll definitely go with an optical attachment. For me, nothing beats the red dot sight here. Red dot is tried and true and it works better in close quarters combat than some of the other longer range sights. I've been saying it until my face turns blue in this episode, but this is your go-to assault rifle for close range combat. The ARX is specifically geared to be awesome in close quarters combat. It kills very quickly, it shoots fast, you only need three shots to kill, it's got better hip fire than other assault rifles, and the laser sight, again, increasing the hip fire. Other than that, it gives you a very nice visual aid. Uh, I don't find the boxes to be as useful as the laser sight for whatever reason, so it is very good for hip firing in close quarters combat. The ARX is best for smaller maps with a few long sight lines, Sovereign being one of them. You can also do a pretty good work with it on Octane, though something more like, uh, what's that map? Stonehaven. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be using the ARX on Stonehaven. So again, my initial opinion of the gun was very unfavorable. I didn't like it at all because it had a very high recoil and very low damage, and I thought that it was a terrible assault rifle, but if you use it almost exclusively for close quarters combat, more like a submachine gun and less like an assault rifle, it actually can do serious work. The first class that I'm going to recommend for you is probably my weirder class of the day, but I did manage to get one of those helo pilots with it. You need extended mags and the shotgun attachment, the shotgun undermount attachment because all you need to do is hit your bumpers on either console and it'll shoot you don't need to swap to it or anything run steady aim to tighten up your hip fire even more because we're going for maximum hip fire here and that affects your shotgun accuracy too. ready up so that you can sprint and then go to ready very quickly and stalker because you're still going to need to aim down sights from time to time in close quarters combat and it's very nice to be able to stalk around the corner this is your up in their face run and gun class uh, the extended mags are going to give you the extra ammo that you're going to need to survive shotgun is when you're reloading when you're low on ammo and if you just want to one-shot people steady aim works you play very, very aggressive with this class, and it will reward you. Class number two is a riskier class that I would use on slightly larger maps. I'm going to use Muzzle Break to give myself some extra range. It doesn't give me as much range on the ARX as it does other assault rifles, but it's very badly needed. I'm going to use an optical attachment. My choice is the red dot. You can use whatever to give me better long-range engagements. And Deadeye. The Deadeye perk is very, very useful on the ARX. I'm going to explain that a little bit more later on. But choose Deadeye and then whatever other perks you want. I think I chose to use Hardline and Ready Up. Focus is also very nice but with Deadeye you're going to be dealing extra damage on some shots you're going to have less shots to kill and overall better range and with your rate of fire that's going to make the ARX a much more competitive weapon but again this is a risky class because you need to get a couple kills to get the Deadeye streak going. So other considerations if you would like to build your own classes is that this is one of the few assault rifles viable for hip fire rushing probably this one and the FAD being the only ones really viable for hip fire rushing but this one is really really made for hip fire rushing I'd honestly tell you to give it a go and this is excellent with Deadeye this is one of the best assault rifles to use Deadeye on because it makes your long range combat much more effective especially if you've got it leveled up a little bit somewhere in those six shots it's very likely that you'll get a Deadeye shot and take four or five shots to kill instead of six and it makes it a much more competitive assault rifle well guys that's all for this episode I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something useful if you'd like to check out the previous episode, which is on the tracker site, you can check the box on the left. That'll open in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, it's going to be on hitboxes. That's probably going to be a longer one. You click that box whenever it's live, and it'll take you right there, open in a new window. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And I have a few sponsors down there in the description. I'd appreciate it if you check them out. Drifter out. Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why are there only UFO abductions in rural backwoods areas? Why are there no downtown LA or uptown New York alien abductions? Why do they only target a specific demographic of people? Alright, looks like the audio's good. Pilot active. Friendly hind incoming. SATCOM uplink enabled. Satcom spotted. 